Some people are really stupid. We hate stupidity even more than selfishness. But what exactly is stupidity? And what makes it the most dangerous force on earth? In 1976, Carlo Cipolla published an essay entitled The Basic Laws of Human Stupidity, which gained popularity first among his friends and then in the international community. He laid out five basic laws. These laws are particularly interesting because they open up a new way of thinking about how human societies can survive. They also have some limitations we'll walk through. At the end of this video, how you think about stupidity, intelligence, and competition will have been changed permanently. Law 1. A stupid person is someone who causes losses to another person or to a group while themselves deriving no gain and even possibly incurring losses. If you've noticed, we first need to understand selfishness to understand stupidity. Weirdly, we have some empathy for the selfish. It's not an enigma to us, because being aware of having acted in selfish ways ourselves, we can understand it. Stupidity, on the other hand, is different. First, our own stupidity is invisible to us. It's always the others who are stupid. That's why we can't show any empathy. That makes it even more frustrating. Second, we hate it because we fear it. At a gut level, we feel that it's a dangerous survival strategy not just for the stupid, but to everyone around them. To put it into perspective, while selfishness would be stealing firewood from your neighbors, stupidity would be setting your own house on fire to warm up. Not only will it harm the stupid, it will also spread to the other houses. Selfish people are easier to navigate around because they are more predictable. They have a clear survival strategy about accumulating resources, even if it harms others. Stupid people are unpredictable. A quick side note here, isn't this an amazingly clear reason for why we have such a broken society today? The whole global capitalist economic model is built on the predictability of selfish people. Remember? greed is good. For example, the board members of an energy company could do worse than to appoint a CEO who is selfish. Solution is easy. Simply align the CEO's compensation with company performance and boom, CEO works to make the company more money. And we all act surprised when these operators act in selfish ways that would harm the world. Maybe we aren't so smart either. Low 2. Always and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people in circulation. We need two axes to visualize how people operate and the four quadrants of people that exist in society. The x-axis plots the benefits to the individual. People may either seek benefits for themselves or they might incur losses on themselves. The y-axis plots benefits for others. People may either follow a strategy to create benefits for others or create losses for others. At the very center of the graph are ineffectual people. Those who incur losses to themselves while creating benefits for others are helpless people. Those who create benefits for others while also benefiting themselves are intelligent people. Those who create benefits for themselves while causing losses to others are bandits. And finally, those who incur losses to both themselves and others are stupid people. Having lived through an era where people created the atom bomb and had their finger on it, Einstein said, only two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the former. Stupid people weren't ones who did not understand his equations. They were the ones that would cause harm to both themselves and others. A fascinating group here are bandits. Let's take the Joker character in the Batman franchises and the 2019 film. Is he stupid? Despite superficially fitting the definition of stupid, i.e. causing others losses as well as himself, he is indeed not stupid, but a bandit. What makes the character attractive is that he dances on the line between stupid people and bandits to provoke the audience. What's ironic is we are relieved to see he's not stupid. We rather take a bandit any day rather than the stupid. That's how much aversion we have towards stupid people. The Joker is a bandit because he gets what he wants. He wants chaos. Others' pain is pleasure for him. And in that sense, he's benefiting himself to some and perhaps himself. He might even be intelligent because he can be seen as the destructive anarchist force that will force a rebirth. Law 3. 
The probability that a certain person will be stupid is independent of any other characteristic of that person. This is a reverse halo effect. The original halo effect is defined in psychology as our propensity to assume all other qualities of a person as positive in the presence of a single observable positive quality. We act as if someone taller or more beautiful would be smarter. In reality, a person might have a high level of IQ, great social intelligence, be street smart, but still be stupid. Big takeaway here is to expect stupidity from any angle, including sometimes yourself. Don't be fooled by flashy degrees or other superficial signs of intelligence. Someone might have good engineering skills and have figured out how to grow a business, but be utterly clueless on how to create real value for society and themselves in the long run. Imagine a list starting with Mark Zuckerberg at the top and ending with Sam Bankman fried with another 100 people in between. Law 4. Non-stupid people always underestimate the damaging power of stupid individuals. Because stupid people don't operate to maximize either their own gain or the gain of others, they are truly destructive. But they're not destructive like a gun, they're destructive like radiation. They can't be directed, but indiscriminately cause harm to all life. For some reason, we consistently act more careful around bandits than stupid people. We think bandits are smarter and can potentially cause more pain on us. Whereas the helpless nature of the stupid lead us to think they won't be as harmful. But the whole point of this narrative is lack of intent and lack of self-interest is destructive in ways we don't expect and understand. Law 5. A stupid person is the most dangerous type of person. Okay, so here's a riddle. Do we survive thanks to our competitive instincts or thanks to our collaborative capacity? The answer is we make use of both as strategies to survive and thrive. It's quite simple, really. Competition is a great strategy to filter for the best individuals to form a group. Collaboration, on the other hand, is a good strategy to filter for the best group among other groups. So they both have a place in our survival. Stupidity doesn't. Stupidity gets the group killed. So we have defined what stupidity is, answered the question why it is so dangerous, and outlined the difference between stupidity and selfishness. But we have a final question left. Why do we hate it so much? We can consider our interactions with stupid people and its effects on groups in the same category as social or moral transgressions, which activate a brain region called the insula. This brain region is one of the primary activity centers in the presence of disgusting stimuli, rotten food, bad animals, bugs, poor hygiene, skin abnormalities, and so on. To strengthen the connection even further, one of the seven facial micro-expressions, which happen outside the consciousness of the individual, is disgust. The facial expression of disgust towards bad smells or social gaffes is exactly the same. Other functions of the insula include compassion, empathy, taste, perception, motor control, self-awareness, cognitive functioning, and interpersonal experience. It's no mystery these are all connected. What happens in the outside world and inside of us are parts of the same experience. Human brains react to things based on their threat level. Stupidity might be less visible sometimes, but it's a big threat. No wonder when it makes itself clear, we show such a strong negative and visceral reaction to it. It's our body's way of protecting itself. It's an evolutionary adaptation. Some final points I'd like to leave you with. A limitation of Cipolla's narrative is the case of altruistic behaviors. They are not selfish, but that does not make them helpless. It might be a choice. In fact, looked from the lens of survival of the group, they are the opposite of stupid. Also, people are not born stupid, so a dynamic and contextual approach is more appropriate. None of us are immune to being stupid, and once someone acts stupid, it doesn't mean they are less of a human. Finally, as you move through life, be humble, curious, and open to learning always. That, I think, is the best strategy to be sure you're not the stupid one in the room, causing pain to you and others around you. You've been listening to the Pantheon. If you found this valuable, consider subscribing for more out-of-the-box thinking on human behavior, society, science, art, and more.